Yeah, everyone hates my movie. It's been a few days since I saw Bo's Afraid. I feel like I just needed this movie to marinate inside my brain to try and get some sort of understanding from it. It didn't help that a lot of the discourse over the weekend has been overwhelmingly negative. A lot of people really do not like this movie. And look, I think there's merit to a lot of that conversation, but there's something I wanna talk about within this video that I think is a bigger picture surrounding this movie and Ari Aster as a director. Like many, I've been a huge fan of Ari Aster ever since Hereditary and Midsommar. I like both of those movies equally. In fact, I probably like Midsommar even a little bit more. I've seen that movie countless times. I really love how weird his movies are. I like that they're slow and you don't fully know at all times what's going on. And usually movies like that are off-putting to mainstream audiences. And perhaps the thing I like the most is that mainstream audiences seem to love Ari Aster's work. And as a filmmaker myself and who someone wants to make movies, that's really interesting because I have a lot of weird fucked up ideas, but putting them into a package that is digestible is sort of Ari Aster's superpower. That is until Bo is afraid. <laughs> the good stuff out of the way first. I liked a lot of this movie. I really did. I enjoyed a lot of elements within this film. To quote a recent episode of Succession, I feel like it had a lot of good parts. It's a parts bin movie. It's a parts shop. But it didn't have a good cohesive package. Good parts, yes. It's shot well, it's acted well, all the elements are there. Joaquin Phoenix is fantastic in it and commits fully and 100% to this obscure and obscene role. But everything you loved about Hereditary and Midsummer kind of throw all of that out the window. Sure, there's elements within this movie that are horror influenced, but this is not by any means a horror movie. If anything, I think Ari Aster was trying to make a comedy. I wanted to make a, a funny movie that was also yeah. sad. What? And it's this mush of genre and tone and style that is very difficult to access. That being said, I think the first 40 minutes of the movie is probably the most accessible. This is where I was like, hey, I think I'm getting this. I think I'm getting on board with what this movie is about. The thing is, a lot of it is just fantastical and it sort of operates in this dream world that isn't our reality, it's nobody's reality. In a way, it's sort of like what it feels like to experience a panic attack at all times throughout this film, put onto screen. We're essentially seeing the movie through Joaquin Phoenix's eyes as Bo with like a panic attack lens on the camera. Things that are probably not that scary through this lens become terrifying. But as someone who has experienced a lot of anxiety and panic attacks in the past, I got what Ari was trying to do, at least I think I did. I've been in a lot of situations that are similar to where Bo found himself and I've felt that way. Is it that extreme? No, but I think there was a bit of an element of comedy added to all of this to push things over the edge and put yourself, the audience member, into an uncomfortable zone. But that uncomfortable zone is very difficult for a lot of people to to sit through. Because as much as anxiety and a panic attack is a, you know, a broad human experience, we've never really seen it portrayed this way, in the Ari Aster way. I sincerely doubt that. I'm sure you'll do the right thing, sweetheart. So think of the weird, crazy stuff from Midsommar and Hereditary. Now put that into a normal guy's human head, you can kind of understand how things can get really wild and weird. Now, Bo is a character that seems to be afraid of anything. You might not be as anxious as Bo, but something you should be worried about is your own privacy and data, and that's gonna bring us to today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. In a world where the internet can be a scary place, Surfshark VPN is here to keep you safe and secure. With Surfshark VPN, you can encrypt your online traffic and hide your IP address, making it virtually impossible for anyone to track your online activity. This means that you can browse the internet with confidence knowing that your personal information is safe and secure. But that's not all. Surfshark VPN also allows you to access content that might be restricted in your area. I use it all the time to watch Hulu because we don't have it in Canada. With Surfshark Surfshark VPN, you can connect to servers all over the world and enjoy content from anywhere. Surfshark VPN is also easy to use. Simply download the app, connect to a server, and you're ready to go. And with unlimited simultaneous connections, you can protect all of your devices at once. So join the millions of satisfied Surfshark VPN users today and experience a safer, more secure, and more open internet. Just visit surfshark.deal slash Tommaso, enter promo code Tommaso, and you'll get 83% off and an extra three months for free. Sponsors like Surfshark allow me to keep making videos for you, so I really appreciate them and you for watching. Let's get back to the video. You know, one of the interesting things about Ari Aster's work is sometimes I wonder if, you know, mainstream audiences really liked Hereditary and Midsummer, or if they sort of just got caught up in the cultural phenomenon around Ari Aster and the fact that he was making something different with a mainstream studio like A24, something that was big 
and had a wide release, you know, a big horror movie had a weird director attached to it. And if you've watched his short films leading up to Hereditary, this guy makes weird shit. And so it kind of became cool to like Ari Aster, much like it's cool to like A24, even if you don't fully love all the elements of Hereditary in Midsommar. I'll be honest, even the end of Hereditary is a little bit iffy for me. I kind of liked how that film had a grounded reality going through it until the end when it kind of turned into this actual pagan mythology. I was like, ah, I'm kind of checked out at this point. And in Midsommar, there's definitely a lot of elements where a lot of people are like, what, why am I watching this? I don't want to see someone's face break on a boulder. Why, why am I here? Is this supposed to be good? You're kind of looking around the room being like, I'm, I'm supposed to like this, right? Whereas with Bo is Afraid, he just goes to the other level. And therein lies the problem with Bo is Afraid because it doesn't have much of that mainstream quality to it where it kind of feels like a normal movie, just something you might throw on on Netflix. It's weird every single scene and it's weird every single moment of the entire film. And so now people don't really have anything to latch onto. And on top of that, most of film Twitter and all of the discourse is saying this is, you know, it's a career killer. This is the end of Ari Aster's life. He's never gonna make a movie again. And that overarching is what I really wanna talk about because I don't think that's true at all. In fact, I like this movie more because it's weird and it's different. And in a way, some of it is actually quite bad because not every filmmaker and not every creative person is gonna have a banger after a banger. Think of musicians. How many albums have come out from different artists that are not as good as the previous album? Does it end their career? No, they're gonna come up with something else. They're gonna keep trying things. The fact that he is experimenting is what is so interesting and important because we now live in a world where filmmakers really aren't experimenting. I'll give you a good example. David F. Sandberg. I love this guy. I love his YouTube channel. I love everything about him. Made some cool little short films on YouTube. Went out and did his own feature length film out of those short films. Then he gets caught up into the machine of superhero movies with Shazam. This is a director that I really wanted to see experiment and try new things within the horror genre or with any genre that he wanted, but I want him to experiment and try something new and different, but he got caught up in that machine. And this happens to a lot of directors. They make a really good indie movie and the next thing you know, you're filming Star Wars. And I am sure there's an alternate reality where Ari Aster makes Hereditary or even after Midsommar and then he's going out and making a Superman movie. And perhaps that would have been a really great Superman movie, but I don't want him doing Superman. I want him doing Bo is Afraid. I want him putting something stupid and crazy and weird, a swing. I want a big swing from filmmakers and creatives because everything is just getting so boring and repetitive and it's all remakes and reboots and reshoots and just all this superhero crap. And I do think there's layers and elements to this movie that we are gonna come to appreciate with time. It is just a very difficult watch that first time around. But there was a lot of moments throughout where I was laughing, I was scared, I was going, what the hell is this? This is insane. And there was parts where I was bored and I was like, I wanna walk out of this movie. I don't wanna see this. This is actually grueling to get through. But that's a first watch. And you know, there's some good movies out there that I've watched the first time and thought sucked. And then on subsequent watches, I learned to like it more and more. But you really gotta watch these movies multiple times to really get into them. You can go back in time and look at reviews to Stanley Kubrick's 2001. And nobody liked that movie when it came out. And now we all say it's probably one of the best movies ever made. And that's a movie even today I can watch and a lot of people will watch and be like, I don't get it. But it exists and it's a swing and it's a unique vision and it's wholly theirs. And that to me is exciting and we need more movies like Bo is Afraid. Movies that push the medium forward, even if it pushes someone's career back. And here's the thing, Ari Aster is going to be fine. You can look at the career of someone like M. Night Shyamalan who had a bunch of hits and then a bunch of misses and he's still able to make movies today. Whether it's self-funded or finding financing, there's gonna be everyone that wants to see what Ari does after Bo is Afraid, even if it's a miss. So this whole idea of it being a career killer, I can't believe he subjected the world to this is bullshit. Ari is an exceptionally talented filmmaker. I think Bo is Afraid still demonstrates that whether you like it or not. He is smart, he has a voice, he has something to say, and he's willing to say it. And that alone is something we cannot say about a lot of other filmmakers that are working today. Too much stuff rhymed in that sentence. But I won't sit here and say, you're gonna love Bo is Afraid. I would probably sit here and say, you're probably not gonna like it. But I would definitely recommend checking it out and watching. I think there's something in here for a lot of people that have experienced anxiety or have relationships with family members that are complicated. There's something in this movie for a lot of people to kind of dig into their own psyche and understand their own relationships and their relationship with the world around them, especially if you experience panic attacks and anxiety or social anxiety. I feel like this is a deeply personal movie for Ari and it's also his way of doing some sort of weird comedy, which is a whole other discussion in itself. I also think the cinematography is great and there's some really great animated elements that worked really well for me too. And on top of that, the score is good, 
Joaquin Phoenix is phenomenal in it. And so there is a lot to love under that sort of umbrella of fucked up weirdness. I wanna throw it back to you and ask you what you thought of Bo is Afraid, but I am now afraid to hear it because it seems like everyone on film Twitter and everybody's just talking about how this thing is awful. And I think that just kind of poisons the narrative around this movie and why I think it's so exciting. So I will just leave it with the fact that I'm glad Bo is Afraid has existed. It is by no means a perfect movie. It is not a masterpiece. It is nothing even remotely close to that. But I do think there is something in this movie movie that is really interesting and the conversation and narrative around a director making a movie like this is really fascinating and exciting for the entire medium of making movies. But I think that's it for me. Thank you again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. I guess let me know what you thought of Bo is Afraid in the comments. Let's keep it civil. But otherwise, my name is Patrick Tomaso. I hope you like this video and you will see or hear me next time I feel like making a video.